<coughs> Hello and welcome to Shadowrun Hong Kong. Today will be different episode because I let developers talk about this area of the game and shut myself up. I was also really happy with uh, the Ho Chan Village look too, because the, the the whole showdown area is actually patterned after a real place. Um, yeah, I remember, it's, I remember it's, looking it's over like, and seeing you on Google uh, Google Street View, uh, yeah, hey, scrolling through Ho Chan Village. The only exactly thing that's missing is uh, is the haunted television studio with the graffiti all over it, uh, and the. The area that the fight takes place in is an amalgamation of two different areas in Ho Chung Village, uh, but I, th I think it sells the idea of that sort of more rural side of Hong Kong that still has multi-story buildings, but feels more empty than uh, the more ritzy areas of Central or Admiralty. The, the goal of the mission, the the MacGuffin that drives the plot is uh, some research data and tissue samples that were spawned by an illustration in the uh, first and second edition Shadowrun book Shadow Tech of a horribly mutated monster known only as uh, uh, Omega 358G. Uh, just a, a random throwaway illustration that Andrew really liked. And I was like, okay, sure, that'll be the thing that you have to, you have to get samples from and then destroy because the, the elves don't want this research out on the, out on the market. Yeah, I like the, the, the ability to reveal that uh, your Johnson is not only lying to you about who he is and what he wants, the only, pretty much the only thing he's not lying to you about is the research. He wants the research and the data. Um, and it's fun to have a face-off between people that would not normally come in contact with each other under any circumstances. Yeah, it's a great face-off. A Sulfa yeah. Ring and uh, Tier Terranger... Uh, Covert operatives from the information secretary don't generally cross paths all that often. Uh, but the, the fun part about that was being able to set up different teams with different specialties. Like the, the tsunami uh, mercenaries have a lot of heavy firepower, a couple of adepts, uh, but only like one one mage. Whereas the sulfur rings are like really heavy on drones and, and riggers be, and uh, heavily cybered individuals, just because sulfur rings are known for being very technologically adept and relying a lot on that kind of technology. And I always love seeing how many of the other team you can get them to kill each other. Yeah, yeah. It, it's, it's a reasonable plan of action. I'll side with one of you, and you guys go first. Uh, you want it? You go first. I'll, I'll hang back here and snipe them. Yeah, it was a good way to introduce uh, some other factions that are, are minor kind of in the Hong Kong context, but they have interest in Hong Kong. And, you know, their their ports running all through there, and they're going to be uh, really interested in that stuff, but you know, we're not about here change here, but we can still have them show up in an interesting way. Yeah, and unlike in most portrayals of Tier Jirangir, they're not uh, they're not immortal elves, they're not uh, high and mighty, they're not unassailable figures. They are simply people with pointy ears that want something that you have, and one of the ways that you can solve that problem is to put your life in their head. Yeah. And it kind of has that Shadowrunner feel, because I'm a very aggressive player when I play Shadowrunner. I pretty much shoot everything and blow everything up and yell at everybody. And so in the first part of the mission in C1, when you're all in the container ship and you get the call, uh, on the intercom, um, there, or from, uh, from the uh, the kind of third party that you're like unaware of who this person is, uh, Tyler wrote in, and I don't know if it ended up shipping. It, it, it shipped. Did, it ended up having one of the best moments of dialogue in the entire game, which is like very often you have these kind of elusive big bad guys yelling at you and telling you all these different things, and I'm always sitting there like going like, but I have a big gun too, and so there's this one line of dialogue where the guy's like, I'm gonna come after you, I'm gonna take you out. I'll paint. And, I'll paint the. Uh, uh, with the blood of your friends. And you can just tell them, get fucked, and <laughs> hang up. And I'm, that's, that's amazing. Like, that's what I would do personally if I, I was in that scenario and I was a Shadowrunner, so I love that part of it. And then you get to the, the second scene of the mission, and you have this kind of double-cross, three-way fight scenario, and they're both kind of vying for your temporary loyalty. No, no, give me the MacGuffin and side with me. No, no, you side with me and I won't kill you. And you can just kind of throw birds to the wind and say, ah, I'm going to kill every single one of you for messing with me. No one double-crosses me. No one demands anything from me. And then you engage, in, which is one of, if you do that, you engage in what is probably one of the hardest fights in the entire Hong Kong game 
because you're completely outnumbered and surrounded. And so it was just a great moment for me to like have to pay for my stupid decisions and try <laughs> to try to dig myself out of the hole that I had built for myself. And I love those moments in Shadow. It's, it's, I think it's really rewarding when you can when you go, you know what? I'm gonna do something totally stupid, yeah. and then you do it, and you're like, yeah, bitches, you are all dead. And you pull it I off. Rad. Yeah, and it's the sort of stuff that like Gobbit talks about in his trust dialogue, which is like. Shadow runs are a lot of bad decisions stacking up and then probably people dying and hopefully not you being those people and somehow getting by the by the skin of your teeth and that mission very much felt like that where it is a lot of lies compounded and mystery compounded and then it explodes at the end. 